Let's stand as we praise God together. <clears throat>
worship Christ the King. Hallelujah. Come worship Christ the King. Hallelujah. Come worship Christ the King. Hallelujah. Come worship Christ the King. Please be seated. From Colossians 1, chapter 1, verse 15 through 23. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created, created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his bloodshed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body, through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard, that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, Worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, worthy you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy, worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you.
Jesus, you are Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer. How he loves me, how I love him. He is risen, he is coming. Lord, come quickly, alleluia. Lord, we praise you. 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 Later this morning, we'll be recognizing our five teenagers from our youth group here who are graduating from high school. It is a significant milestone. It is a big event, and I am really glad that we are, are going to be spending some special time as we focus on them and acknowledge that achievement. Each of them have had a number of milestones and achievements in their high school career. Of course, they've been going to classes and taking math and science and reading and all the other types of stuff, but they also have been active in extracurricular activities, uh, sports, uh, fishing, theater, all kinds of other things that uh, uh, they have excelled in, and it's appropriate that we recognize that. Of course, the high school time is also one filled with a lot of rather mundane moments. Uh, you, you get up, you go to school, you go to classes, you take notes, you see your friends, you do homework, you take tests, and, and you do that day after day after day after day. I mean, it's just kind of what you do. And for those high school students, I, I don't want to shatter any bubbles that you might have, but after you graduate and you get to work, you do exactly the same thing, okay? You get up in the morning and you make your coffee or you open your can of Red Bull, however you take your caffeine, 
and you then kind of go through, you know, you commute to the office, you drive past some of the same folks, unless you're working at home, and then you commute to another part of your house. And you then have victories and defeats and interactions and meetings through the course of the day, and you come home, and you then go to bed, and the next day you do it all again. I mean, it's just kind of the nature of routine, if you will. And life is a series of those routines. It doesn't matter if one day you are an airline pilot, or you are a physician, or you are a college professor, or you are a server in a restaurant. Your life is built around a series of routines and activities. And the truth is, in many ways, our success as persons is built about how we develop and manage and what we do really in those daily routines. In this morning's lesson, we are going back to the book of Colossians. In Colossians 1, as Greg read to us this morning, where Paul is setting out for us the role of Jesus Christ and who he is and what he does. And as I said last week, Jesus' sacrifice completes the reunification of God with sinners. And that's us. He's the one who reconciled. He is the one who restores the peace. And the cross, as again Colossians tells us so clearly, is an event of spectacular consequence because it brings souls from all the way back to the beginning, all the way to the end of the start of eternity, back into relationship with their God. And our personal baptism marks a mighty moment where that intersection occurs in our life. The Apostle Paul stated it succinctly in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 9 or so and following. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been, that's a past tense, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? But what we'll find in our text this morning is kind of like life in school. It is lived out in the routine the routines of each and every single day. It is, in fact, those routines that become some of the most significant. Rachel and I, as of today, have been married 15,319 days. So has Phil and Leanne. And so if they were still with us with Bill and Shirley Clark, we all shared that anniversary. And, and I think about the amazing moments that had been part of Rachel and I's life. Of course, there was our wedding, uh, but we got, I, I had our first anniversary graduating from Lipscomb. And then I think back of other events through the course of our experience. I mean, all the times when, well, you know, we had three children and five grandchildren, and we were there for those moments and experiences. And I think back on those times when, you know, uh, great things happen. And I would include in that almost five years, a week short of it, five years ago, Rachel and I started serving this congregation. And so there are those milestone major events that are, that are there. And, and yet, if I were to, to think about the vacations and the beginning and ends of jobs and some of those milestones of home purchases and sales and buying and selling cars, probably I could only really tell you about five or six hundred days. 
So the question that I would raise is, what occurred on those other 14,800 days? Life happened. Approximately, no, exactly, 16,702 days ago, I was baptized into Christ. Uh, that was obviously a spiritual high point. Uh, there have been a great many others. I have been privileged to baptize all three of my children, one of my sons-in-law, and one of my grandsons so far. And it has been a wonderful experience spiritually to walk through life. I attended the National Promise Keepers Rally with with over a million men to pray for our nation. But I would be remiss if I didn't also tell you that there were dark days. Uh, there were humbling days. Times when I had treated others badly and had to beg their forgiveness. That's probably another five or six hundred days that I would hallmark, but what about the others? Well, that's life. That's our experience, our, our life as we live it. If we go back to Colossians, if we examine what Paul says here, in verse 22, he says that the result of Christ's sacrifice is our presentation to God holy in His sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Now, we can only understand that within the context of this larger reading of what Paul says here in Colossians. And in particular, what we said last week when we talked about the fact that salvation is in and by and of and through Jesus Christ. And, and, and the truth is that it is His blood, it is His sacrifice, it is His death on the cross that provides peace and reconciliation for humanity. And that is is what saves. And the result that is presented in our text this morning is that we stand holy as a result of what he did and our receiving of that. We live lives that despite the spiritual up and down, we live lives that are free from blemish and accusation. Now, I have to say that in my past connection with churches and in my conversation with other folks and even in my own reflection, many times when asked about the security of our salvation, the response would have been, do you believe that you are saved? And the overwhelming response would be, I hope so. I hope so. I, I don't think the times when I felt that, that I was alone. Like many individuals, I would lay down at night and I would kind of do a bit of a mental reckoning, if you will, and I would think about and assess where I was spiritually. And it was not uncommon many nights to lay down and to have anxiety and fear begin to cascade over my soul. What had I said to my secretary? Where had I surfed on the internet? Had I prayed enough? Had I read the Bible enough? Had I shared my faith enough in that particular day? Only an honest assessment at the close of every day would I recognize that I was damaged goods. I mean, the, the truth is I was kind of like that woohoo meat after two days in the Kroger sale bin, getting a little bit brown on the edges. 
But the scriptures teach us that because of Christ's action, Paul says that's not how God sees us. He sees us without blemish. And there is no place for an accusation. It's a lengthy reading, but well worth our time. In Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and following, the Apostle Paul summarizes our standing like this. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? For it is written, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. This must become a settled part of our daily lives. That we recognize that our standing before God is based and rooted in the actions, the completed actions of Jesus Christ. And I believe that in these verses here in Colossians, Paul provides a pathway toward that conviction. We are, he says, to continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. The key, Paul says here, the key is that we have faith in Christ. The key is that we hope in the gospel and our continuation of and stability in our salvation is dependent upon what Christ has done. And this truth is critically important. It is not just a preacher's rant. Because the alternative is to say that what Jesus did was incomplete or imperfect or not finished. No, what Jesus did on the cross lacked nothing. The gospel is perfect. And it makes me perfect when I believe it and as I continue to trust in it. And that is critically important because I would draw your attention to what is not described there. Your or my behavior. Attending church, partaking of the Lord's Supper, worshiping in the right way doesn't change your standing before God. And neither, I might add, does the alternative. Swearing, pornography, gossip does not change your standing before God. That is settled by the blood of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. To Paul, salvation is about what Christ did, not what you do. What you do is embrace and receive the embrace of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. And that's how salvation is established in your life. Our five graduates today celebrate the end of high school, but it's not the end of their education. They're going to college, 
they'll graduate from college, we'll have another recognition of them at that point. But those of us who are past some of those milestones will also observe, however, that that won't be the end of their education either. Instead, all their lives, pretty much up until the day that they die, they'll be learning. That's how God intends the Christian life, the Christian walk to be. We are established by the sacrifice of the Son, Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, we live by faith. We will not near be perfect. We never will be perfect. In fact, to be frank, we will sin greatly. But our intention is that we spend our life growing and developing and becoming more and more like the image of the one who provided our salvation, the one who saved us. And that is called the Christian life. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for what you did in your son. And we thank you, God, for his sacrifice, for his reconciliation of us to you. And Father, it is only because of his actions that we can stand before you. Not our work, but his. And we thank you, God, for that gift. And Father, we rejoice that, that he acted and that we have responded. We pray, Father, that you will continue to help us to look to his example and model, and that we will receive that life-changing embrace that will carry through our entire lives as we become more and more like your son, Jesus. Father, we're going to spend some time here in just a moment thinking about what Christ did, what he accomplished. And truly, God, we owe you more than just a few moments. We owe you all. And we commit to giving that to you. We make that affirmation in the name of the one who saves us. Jesus Christ. Amen. Communion cup, can you raise your hand? I think there are a couple of people that still need them. So many of you know that, that um, my sister Michelle has been in the hospital since February 16th and she's had a lot of up, ups and downs during that time and setbacks. Um, some of you don't know that on Monday as I was driving home from work I actually got a call from two of my siblings telling me that I needed to get up to Pittsburgh, um, that things were looking bad and that she was not expected to make it more than a couple of days. Um, so I headed up there and, you know, things were really rough, touch and go. Um, you know, as I visited with her, I was pretty sure that it was the last time that I was going to get to talk to her. Um, and quickly that, that became a life-defining moment for me. So what's a life-defining moment? Those are those moments in time that that you remember the rest of your life. It's such a big event that it changes your course of life. It changes the direction. It, 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 
you can see multiple other things that happen because of that moment. You know, and just in the past six years, I've had a number of big life-defining moments. Um, my oldest brother, Mike, died at age 42 from a heart attack. Wendy was diagnosed with breast cancer. The accident in Haiti. And, and this week for me. Um, but not all life-defining moments are negative things. You know, in the, the past I've had some great things. Um, getting accepted to Vanderbilt to do residency, which led me to meeting Wendy. And when I asked her to marry me, she actually said yes. And the, the Ball family accepted me to be one of their own and have shaped the person that I am today. Um, I've had the, the privilege and the responsibility of having three kids and, and being responsible for raising them. But these are, these are all events that affect my life on earth. They affect who I am, they affect where I'm going. But my biggest life-defining moment was on January 4th, 1987, when I accepted Christ as my savior, was baptized and became a Christian. Because that's something that changes the course of not just my life, but of, of my eternity, eternity and where I'm gonna be. Right now, we have the opportunity to think about that life-defining moment that each of us have had to become a Christian and to know that because of God's, or Jesus' sacrifice for us, that we're gonna be with God for eternity. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for letting us gather here today as a church family, for letting us gather as Christians, for letting us to be able to think about your son's sacrifice for us. God, right now, so many things are swirling through my mind and so many different emotions. Um, family things, but also being super proud of our five graduates. All five of them were raised here at Riverwood, and they're Christians. And we know that they're gonna go out and they're gonna be examples of your love, and they're gonna spread your word, and they're gonna bring people to know you. And God, I ask that you just continue to bless this church, bless us as Christians, help us to look to you for our guidance, for our strength. Let us never forget how much you love us. Please be with us right now as we take this bread and as we take this juice. Help us to remember that because of Christ's sacrifice, we are forgiven of our sins, and we will be with you one day. We love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day and all your blessings that go with it. We ask today that you, uh, you be with uh, Michelle and the ones that are treating her, uh, strengthen her family. 
We also ask that you be with those that are suffering chronic pain or dealing with other health issues. Uh, ease the pain, if it be your will. Strengthen them. We're thankful for the outcome of Bruce's procedure. And today we are so thankful for these five graduates that have grown up in this church and been a joy to all of us. As they go into this next stage of their, their lives, we know that they have been prepared and armored by wonderful Christian families and by the youth program at this church. So we know that they'll be great examples and will be successful in whatever they choose to do. But continue to guide them and strengthen them as they go into this next challenge. Help us to be stronger in our beliefs as we go forward. Help me with my shortcomings uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for all the blessings that you provide us. Thank you most of all for your son and his sacrifice. In Christ's name, amen. He's my rock, he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. You're my rock. You're my fortress, you're my deliverer, in you will I trust. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. If you haven't filled your communication card out, please do that and pass that towards the center aisle. And kids, as we sing this next song, you can uh, take those up. Please hang around for our graduation celebration in here. Then we'll have class, and then we hope that you're able to join us in the fellowship hall for our graduation meal after that. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. All right, well, good morning, church. What a beautiful day it is. What a wonderful day it is. Oh, yes, I do need that. Thank you. And uh, just a good opportunity, uh, a good morning to be able to be together. As I'm excited about uh, this day for uh, a couple different reasons. One, um, it, it means that summer's almost here. Um, and so excited about that and just love all of the opportunities that get to spend time with the teens. But at the same time, excited 
uh, for some of our young men and women and the opportunities that uh, that they have before them and just what we get to publicly recognize them for and even celebrate with them and their families um, for what I guess at least one of them has already been through, but uh, uh, we have uh, a few others who, who still have, uh, have some exci- exciting day uh, coming up very soon. But we're going to take this opportunity this morning to honor and recognize our 2022 high school graduates and just to be able to honor them and to celebrate with them not only as a community of faith, but as a church family. Um, because just like, as, as Corey mentioned earlier, each one of these guys and girls have grown up here. And, and you know, for me, uh, that's, I still look at that as a privilege that I've been in a place long enough that I not only get to celebrate graduation with these families, but it's celebrating graduation with families where I saw and visited most of them uh, in the hospital when they were born. And so just a, a unique experience for me in a lot of ways. And, and it just still blows me away. Uh, when I think about it, and still uh, is very humbling uh, just to be able to be able to experience this and to go through this. And it just seems like it wasn't that long ago that they were little. Uh, Seems like it wasn't that long ago that they were in diapers, uh, learning how to walk, and and, and so many other wonderful things that we've been able to see and experience through the years um, as we have grown together, as we have lived life together. And as we have been able to share and experience in such wonderful uh, opportunities uh, together. And so as we get started this morning, uh, we're going to take just a few walks down memory lane and just kind of remember uh, some of the past, some of the history um, of some of these guys and girls. And then after we kind of see a a slideshow of each one, I'll ask them to come up and just kind of we'll share a few things about them. And and then and then we'll go from there. So um, here we are. Let's let's get started. First graduate to come on down, uh, Andrew, if you'll kind of make your way down here. Um, Andrew is, uh, he's going to be going to, or he's going to be graduating, not going to, he's going to be graduating from, he eventually will be going somewhere, but he's going to be graduating from Beach High School um, on Saturday, May 21st. And uh, he's going to be graduating with honors. Um, and while in school, Andrew was inducted into the Beta Club, and he was both on the fishing team and tennis team. As he graduates, he is also a Microsoft certified in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Um, Andrew plans to attend Vol State University um, initially, and then has plans to transfer and finish at Tennessee Tech. He's currently planning to major in mechanical engineering, um, and. Uh, 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 at least for now. Um, when he thinks back on high school, um, his high school experience, um, some of his best memories, and what he'll remember most, uh, he says that he's going to miss the crazy and possibly underqualified substitute teachers uh, that, that he got to experience in his time. Um, he, oh, and he just said, he said there's lots of stories with that, so uh, you, can, you can feel free to ask him to share those later. Um, he also says that when he thinks about just kind of um, some of his biggest accomplishments to this point in life um, would have to be being able to remain a good student while being involved in different sports and clubs and, and staying committed to church and the youth group. And so, Andrew, on behalf of the youth ministry and our church family, I just want to tell you how proud we are of you <laughs> and how much we love you. Uh, and just how excited we are to not only, uh, you know, it, just the life we've been able to experience with you, but watch you on the journey that you're going to be able to take uh, coming forward. And so, Andrew, if you'll have a seat, uh, let's take another little jaunt down memory lane. <laughs> 